So I've just started reading a book that was recommended to many of us by our bishop called Canoeing the Mountains. And it's a book about Christian leadership and church leadership in a new age. And it uses as its main analogy for church leadership the expedition <coughs> of Lewis and Clark. So you probably all know this story, or you've heard some version of this story, but it goes something like this. Lewis and Clark set out from the east looking for an all-water route across our entire country that ended at the Pacific Ocean. That's the simple version, right? And they thought this was going to happen by following the Missouri River. So they made it all the way to the headwaters of the Missouri River. And they were super excited because they thought, we've done it. All we've got to do, their, 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 their journal said, is all we really have to do is just go up this one small rise, and then it's smooth sailing all the way to the Pacific Ocean. And we're just going to, and, and so, and that was what everybody told them. And they were super excited because they had planned an all-canoe trip all the way across the country. Well, the bad news was that when they got up over that small little rise and they got to the top with, with all their things, they looked out and they saw the Rocky Mountains stretching out for hundreds of miles in front of them. And they realized that they were not prepared for the rest of their journey. They had no idea what to do next. They were not experienced mountaineers. They weren't even, you know, you know good kind of um, working in the wild kind of people. They just had gotten really good at canoes. And some people might have mentioned to them, you know, we, you're going to have to go over some mountains there. But their only understanding of mountains was the Appalachian Mountains. You know, those nice rolling hills that went on. And that was their understanding of what mountains were. And so when they found themselves standing there, looking out at these snow-covered peaks as far as they could see, they realized that they were a little out of their depth. This is the main story that the author of Canoeing the Mountains is telling us about being a church <coughs> in the 21st century, and that basically what we have now come up against is a world that is going to cause us to come up with new answers to old questions. There's some sobering statistics, especially about the Pacific Northwest. Maybe you don't realize it, but you guys are part of a 20% group of people who have anything to do with any type of religion whatsoever in the Pacific Northwest. 20%. Just this last week, I saw another statistic that said only 30% or so of people in this entire area even have a belief in any type of higher power. So even if we're saying, what's a higher power? Still, 30%. Very, very small numbers of people in our part of the world. And in other parts of the world, where even people claim where I'm from originally in Alabama, 80% or so claim some belief in a higher power or belief in God or whatever it is, but still are having problems with the church answering the questions of a new age. A new age that is beyond what we had called Christendom for 1,700 years. We are living a new life. And it's a new life that will require new answers. You see, we as the church have gotten really good at canoeing. Oh my gosh, in the 1950s, we were the best canoers around. We were canoeing, we had everything under control, we knew what was happening. And then all of a sudden, somewhere between the 1950s and today, the world started changing faster than the church started being able to understand those changes. People started leaving in droves, and still are. And we are still trying to answer those hard questions 
with really the same old answers. We say to ourselves, you know, if we just had a better program, if we just had a better preacher, if we just had a better this, a better that, if we just did this a little bit differently, then surely people are just going to flock in the doors. Because that's the way it used to work. But it just doesn't work that way anymore. And what is being called from God's church is for a transformation. A transfiguration, as it were, if we're listening to our gospel today very closely. Because in the gospel today, Jesus takes Peter and James and John, and he goes up on the mountain, and they have this experience of God and of Jesus Christ, which changes them forever. I don't know if you've ever had this experience, something like this. Maybe not even about God, but maybe when you learned something new about the world that changed the way you saw the world forever. I've had this experience a couple of times. One of the times I had it was in the first time I ever went to Johannesburg, South Africa. Now, growing up in Alabama, I didn't learn a lot about Africa. But what I did learn about Africa is that it was a war-torn hellhole with a lot of starving people and really nothing at all. Just death and destruction. And so when I got to Johannesburg and I stepped out and went to a mall and on the way to the mall saw a Lamborghini, <laughs> I was a little bit stunned by that experience. I thought, wait a, wait a minute. That's not what Africa is supposed to look like. Now obviously, there's a lot of different places there. But my view had been with blinders on to anything else which might have been possible there. I didn't think there'd be people that might live in nice homes, drive nice cars, have nice malls with nice shops that they could go to, eat delicious food, have wonderful wine. I'd never, ever conceptualized that at all. Now, Every time I see or hear someone talk about Africa, I see it differently. I understand the world differently. And that was specifically what happened at the transfiguration with Jesus, with Peter and James and John. They had a visual, auditory, physical experience of God speaking to them about who Jesus was, and they were never, ever, ever going to be the same again. Not ever. Now remember, these are people that were traveling around with Jesus. They had seen him heal people. They had watched amazing things. They had seen him treat people with the love and kindness and care that, that, that they were learning about. And yet, it was that experience on the mountain of seeing Jesus transfigured that made it impossible for them to ever see the world in the same way again. They walked down from that mountain back into a world that was the same. But it wasn't the same for them. It wasn't the same for them because they could never look at a person who was hurting in the same way again. They could never experience God in the temple the same way again. They were changed in such a radical way that they started coming up with new answers to old questions. They started challenging people who kept telling them, this is the way it has to be, with, no, that's not the way it has to be. Things can and must be different. And that is the calling of the church today. We must have that experience, both individually and as a body gathered together who call ourselves Christian, and then we must walk out into a new adventure where our old answers will not be the right answers for what happens next. And here's the scary part. Nobody actually knows what the right answer answer is. As we sit here right now, today, together, there's a lot of fear. People think that the church is just going to continue this downhill slide and to death. And I can tell you, 
that will be true if we don't start looking with new eyes, hearing with new ears, experiencing the world and God in a different way that helps us reach out to other people to invite them into this journey, this new adventure. I can tell you, people are tired of the old story that we've been telling. And Episcopalians tell a pretty good story. But many of us were brought up to believe that everybody who was an Episcopalian was already an Episcopalian. But there's no way we get new Episcopalians. We're all the right-thinking people. We know what we're doing. We're just going to carry on. We know that's not true. It's not true for the church. It's not true for almost any organization in the world today. Our world has changed faster in the last hundred years than it has changed ever in all of recorded human history. The amount of knowledge that is accessible from a cell phone is more than any human being ever in recorded history has ever had access to, ever. Remember, 500 years ago, there weren't that many books in the first place. Most people didn't know how to read. (coughs) There was just not access to the types of things we have access today. And no, we get to sit and watch somebody put a car into outer space on the way to Mars last week. (laughs) My friend, if nothing else tells us that the world is looking for new answers to old questions, that should wake us up. It should wake us as a church up to say, we are on a new adventure. We are on a new journey. My friends, let's take it together. There is nothing to fear because God has been on this journey a long time before we joined him and will be on this journey a long time after we're gone. But now is our time to join together as a community of faith, as individuals, and to stand with God and walk, even though we're standing at the top of the mountain holding our canoe, God knows how to lead us over those mountains, and we can do it together. Amen.